जय श्रीमद नारायण माई सैलिब्रेशन टू द लॉट स्वीट ऑफ द लॉर्ड इयर we offer mangala sessions to all the devotees <coughs> who are serving the lord and the community here with great devotion and enthusiasm whenever we have good company of devotees sattvic qualities will increase in us by seeing which the grace of guru falls on us followed by his own grace we hear the stories of ravana we hear the stories of hiranyakashipu hiranyakashipu was lost not because he was bad but because he did not accept the company of good people he did not accept the satsang you know satsang right the good people's company Prahlada was there, his own son, great duty of the Lord. But Hiranyakasipu never wanted to hear anything from his son, and he insisted his son to forget about God, not to speak anything about God. Because he denied Prahlada's advice, he lost. to have the company of devotees they may be of any age but devotees not necessarily they should be so big tall heavy not necessarily a devotee may be small but devotee is a devotee as the name of the lord is like fire which burns all the papas to ashes हरिर्हरति पापानि दुष्ट चित्तैर अपिस मुरुता इवेन दोथ आर इल माइंडेड पीपल बट इफ दे चांट द नेम ऑफ द लॉर्ड इट बर्न्स देयर सिन्स टू एशेस जस्ट लाइक द फायर व्हेदर यू नो इट और नॉट अनिच्छयापि संस्पृष्टः दाहत्येव हि पावक पावक इज द फायर and the moment is somebody touches that whether they knowingly touch or uh, knowingly it burns so the name of the lord when we touch it burns all the sins to ashes and anyone can tell the name anyone can chant the name and anyone can join the group of devotees so prahlada was small Hiranyakashipu was his own father, and Prahlada was blessed to get the knowledge from his guru, and he was interested in his father's promotion in learning something good and getting benefit of that. But unfortunately, Hiranyakashipu was not at all interested in hearing the words of Prahlada, and. ultimately he has seen the wrath of that did you hear the story of ramayana ravana was a a great person with vedic knowledge <coughs> ravana seems knowing lot of veda there is a book called ravana but ravana but which talks about how many letters are there in each of the chapters how many words and how many mantras started with particular letter all these details you know he wrote a wonderful book that we 
means he must be knowing Veda in detail, having tremendous amount of knowledge. Yet he did not want to join devotee's company. Devotees are there even with him. <coughs> His own brother, Vibhishana, was there. And he was always telling, 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 telling. He never kept silent as long as he was there with Ravana. Or as long as he, Ravana permitted him to be with him. As long as Vibhishana was there in Lanka, Lanka was safe. But when Vibhishana left Lanka, and of course Ravana drove him out of Lanka, and the fall of Lanka started. <coughs> Ultimately, Ravana last. Company of good people, that's the one which saves us from many things. Have good company of devotees. You will be saved always. Whether you know it or not, you have seen trains, right? No many trains you use here. But in our country, in Bharat, we have many, many trains. Yeah, we travel by trains also. And many people travel by trains. So busy. Every day there are many trains. There'll be one engine and all the all the compartments will be moving along with it. Whether the person in the in the compartment whether he knows it or not, but when he is in that, he tends to reach a destination wherever the train takes him right. Yes. So also the good company of people. Whether you know it or not, but you tend to reach it. But if it is good people's company, you will be saved. Otherwise, you are lost. Today, our Mr. Vamsiji instructed us to speak on lessons from Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> I said, lessons from Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> Every letter God spoke is a lesson for us, right? God never speaks anything like gossiping. But even, do you know what is gossiping? Do you like gossiping? <laughs> <laughs> we like gossiping a lot. <laughs> you know what it is? It's God sipping. <laughs> <laughs> and God never speaks something that's not worth. Anything He speaks with meaning, with purpose, that gives us a solace and ultimately takes us to the excellence. <clears throat> That's how God speaks. So Bhagavad Gita in total is the message of God. Though it is like that, but when you take the very first sloka of Bhagavad Gita, that itself gives you a powerful message. The very first sloka. All of you know Bhagavad Gita very well, right? You must be chanting Bhagavad Gita also many years. Right? What is the first sloka? Mamaka Pandava Steva Kimakurvata Sandhya Dharma Kshetre Kuru Kshetre Samaveta Yuyutsavaha Mamaka Pandava Steva Kimakurvata Sanjaya. A very beautiful sloka it is. It gives wonderful message by itself. Do you know the meaning of the sloka? It's not Krishna's message, of course, but it's the message of Bhagavad Gita. Because he said not Krishna's message. He said lessons from Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> so we took the first sloka of Bhagavad Gita. It is the word of Dhritarashtra. 
the father of Kauravas. Hundred one Kauravas. How many? One of one. Hundred brothers and one sister. They were Kauravas. And various Pandavas and their own brothers. They were just five in number. And both were the brothers but were not interested in sharing good things with each other. And Pandavas never fight. But Kauravas never let them live in peace. They were always trying to do something to them by giving poison, by burning their houses, doing many stuff. But what to do? Ultimately, they were exiled to the forest and finished the course of 12 plus 1 years. And again, they wanted their kingdom back, their share of the kingdom back to them, which was denied by Kauravas. And ultimately, the war was declared by Kauravas. But, of course, God always stands for good. And God himself kept available for both the parties. When Arjuna has come and Duryodhana, the son of Dhritarashtra came requesting Lord Krishna for help. And he said, choice is yours. I'm on one side. But I have 10,000 warriors with me. Bodybuilders, <laughs> wonderful wrestlers <clears throat> with so many weapons, 10,000 people. They are on the other side. I am on one side, okay? You can choose. Choice is yours. And I want Arjuna to choose first. Duryodhana and Arjuna both came to seek help from Lord Krishna. Happening because Krishna happened to see Arjuna fast because he was sitting at the lotus feet of the Lord. He always chooses to be that as his place. But Duryodhana talked, no, why should we sit at feet? We should sit at his head. So he came and sat at the side of his head because he is very much proud of his own power and abilities. When Krishna opened his eyes, he saw Arjuna first and uh, that's how he said, because I happen to see Arjuna first, a choice, first of all, I'd like to give to Arjuna. And then BP started raising to see <laughs> What are the choices Krishna had? 10,000 bodybuilders, 10,000 wrestlers with weapons on side. And Krishna made it very clear, I alone on one side, without holding any weapon. I never want to hold any weapon. But I'm always available for any kind of advices, free advices. <laughs> so I am on one side. So, so Duryodhana thought, I have already many advices with me. <laughs> there are so many advices, free advices with me. Why should I add one more? Pay <laughs> no, it is waste. I want to take 10,000 warriors at any cost. But Krishna gave the choice first to Arjuna. My God, is he going to ask for 10,000 people? So he was very anxious, waiting to see what is happening. Arjuna said, with all humbleness, Lord, I don't know what to ask. But because you instructed to ask, I want you only. That's it. Yes, I want you. I don't want anything else. Hey, Arjun, think twice. <laughs> Before opting, think twice. 
I would be there, no problem, but I don't hold any weapon, okay? Lord, you are enough. Why weapons? Why other things? If you are there, everything is there. And if you are not there, nothing is there. So my Lord, if you are with me, I think everything is done. Hey, I never fight. I never fight, okay? That's fine, my Lord. If you are with us, and that's all I want. Immediately from the own seat, Duryodhana jumped like a spring. <laughs> jumped like a spring. Poor Raj didn't know what to ask. And what not to ask. That's why you poor guys have been exiled, you know. Lord Krishna, because Arjuna has taken you as his choice, it's okay, give me those 10,000 people. <laughs> he came back running to his home and he met with his grandpa, Bhishma Jarya, the old warrior. And then he said, Oh, my grandpa, I achieved a jackpot today. <laughs> Bhishma Chari never saw such a face. <laughs> such a glory in his face. Hey, what did he achieve today? He said, Grandpa, 10,000 warriors, <laughs> I want today. Poor Arjuna asked a single Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> I want 10,000 people. Really? Yes, Grandpa, true, 100% true. I'm not joking. <laughs> and on the other hand, I, that Krishna said he's not going to hold any weapon, <laughs> not going to fight anything, and just want to give free advice. So why? <laughs> why such one for us? <laughs> Suryodhan, did Krishna say that he's not going to hold any weapon? Yes, Grandpa, he said that he's not going to. Look, Duryodhan, if Krishna said that he's not going to hold a weapon, I'm pledging today. I'm taking another oath today. I make Krishna to wear weapons at any cost. Uh, you? He just flat before his grandpa because he was always suspecting his grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> they are all favorites of Pandavas. He was thinking, you are all favorites of Pandavas. My grandpa had misunderstood you. So sorry. Are you going to fight with that part? And Vishwajari said, yes. If Krishna said that he's not going to hold any weapon, today I take an oath that I make Krishna to hold weapons at any cost. Duryodhana, you know, all his shirts were torn off. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> Because, you know, his chest has been expanded. <laughs> Five inches. <laughs> they started pulling up their own horses. Eleven Akrabanis on one side. Kauravas, because they were ruling the country, they were able to gather eleven Akrabanis for their side. Whereas Pandavas were able to get only seven Akrabhadis. But they said, it's okay. Krishna is there for us to give advices. But all the great people were there on the Pandava side, on the Kaurava side. But still it is okay, they said. <clears throat> War started. We know the story. War started. Eleventh day it was. Bhishmacharya was giving a strong fight 
Arjuna became helpless, not able to fight, not able to throw any weapons, and he became really weak. And Lord Krishna was instructing Arjuna, Hey Arjun, fight, fight, fight. What to fight? If there is energy to it, he will fight. <laughs> he totally got dehydrated. <laughs> so how can he give any fight to And the other one is Vishnu Acharya. He's not an ordinary person. And at that situation, when Bhishma Acharya was throwing arrows against Arjun, I am also throwing arrows against Lord Krishna, and Krishna could not take it easy anymore. He wanted to stop Bhishma Acharya. Surprisingly, Krishna jumped out of the chariot and took the wheel, made his chakra, and wanted to throw it on Vishwacharya. Arjuna saw the scene and then he got hold of his feet and said, Lord, don't do that, please. I have to waste the war, not you. Please, Krishna, please. On the other side, Vishwacharya felt really happy. <laughs> And Vishwacharya stood in his chariot and said, My Lord, I won the war. I won the war. You know why? What you promised and what I pledged. You took an oath, I took an oath. What is your oath? Not holding any weapon. What is my oath? making you to hold weapons, okay? I know you are so compassionate on me, my Lord. I am your benevolent disciple. And you know what I am. To make my oath fulfilled, satyam vidhatum nija vritya bhashitam because I am your devotee. To make my oath fulfilled, you gave up your own oath. That is God. That is God. If a devotee takes an oath, even if it is against the oath of God, but to fulfill that oath, God is ready to give up his oath. My Lord, Proof that today. Your oath is not to hold the weapon. My oath is to make you hold the weapons. And you know that, that I took a pledge like that. To fulfill mine, you gave up your oath. And that's how you hold the chakra today. That means my oath is fulfilled. Right? Now no one is required. That's because I'm your servant, right? You instruct me, have Hishmacharya, give up your weapons. Done. No questions are asked. You are my boss. You are my boss, my lord. You are my lord. You are my everything. And if you instruct to do something, it is done. No questions are asked. No reasoning is required. If you want me to drop my bows and arrows, Right now, dropped. But don't make an effort. Don't try to use any force on me. You can't win over me. That is Vishwacharya. You understand? Vishwacharya is not an alternate person. He said, Lord, you can't use your force and win over me. You cannot. Because I am your devotee. But you instruct me to drop, drop, right away, drop, that's it. And now, occupy me, my Lord. Occupy me, over. Because my war is finished now. Then Arjuna shooted arrows. Then Vishwacharya fell on the bed of arrows. 
you know the story later. It was on the 11th day of the war, the Margasirsha Ekadasi was that day. Bhishmacharya fell on the bed of arrows. <coughs> Uh, do you know what is the Gita Jayanti? When it comes? <laughs> what I got this? <laughs> Vishma Kadasi is the day on which Bhishma Jaya has given Vishnu Sahasra Nam. After exactly two months. Exactly after two months of his fall, uh, that was not Vishnu Kadasi. And that was not Vaikuntha Kadasi also. <laughs> that was Margasirsha Ekadasi. Margasirsha Ekadasi. The lunar month Margasirsha comes in the Ekadasi, the eleventh day. Gita Jayanti is done. What is Gita Jayanti? What is Jayanti? A birthday, yes. So Bhagavad Gita birthday is observed on 11th day of Margasira, isn't it? When did the war start? Do you know that? On the first day. On the first day of Margasira. War started on, in fact, on the new moon day. New moon day comes, right? Before the lunar month starts, Amavasya. So on the Amavasya day, the war started. But when are you performing Gita birthday? Hmm? On the 11th day. What is that? A boy takes birth today and you are performing after 10 days. <laughs> you know, just like people in America, they celebrate everything on the weekends. <laughs> you know, birthday also goes to the weekend and death day also goes to the weekend. <laughs> Every function goes to the weekends because that is only the holiday that is available for them. <laughs> is it that that you push the Bhagavad Gita birthday from first day to the 11th day? Bhagavad Gita did not born on the eleventh day. Bhagavad Gita born on the very first day of the war. Right? Because before war started, Arjuna fell sick. Sarva stricken. He didn't want to waste the war. And Krishna forced him, gave his benevolent message, and then by which again he got inspired and started fighting. Isn't it? War started, 11 days passed. That is Ekadasi. What you are performing is Bhagavad Gita Jayanti. But Gita given when? After war started or before war started? That means on which day? The first day. And then, then you have to perform the Bhagavad Gita Jayanti. Why are you performing the 11th day? There is a nice reason behind. There is a wonderful reason behind. Lord Krishna has given Bhagavad Gita. To who? Arjuna. To Arjun. But who was the witness? No one. No one. Literally no one was there because Lord Krishna, when he was giving the message, Arjuna should listen to that carefully, right? And also, if at all he got some doubts, he has to ask also, right? Yes. It's a war field. There are 18 octavians of battalions. And there are elephants, there are horses, there are camels, there are people, there are chariots, there are drums, there are so many instruments. And when those things are, do you think that they keep uh, just like a uh, just like you guys, devotees, all they sit with all peaceful meditating or something <laughs> in the war field. 
Human beings may sit, if at all. But whatever, the elephants and horses, they also sit in the meditation. <laughs> and when thousands and uh, hundreds of thousands of elephants and horses are there, do you think that they went in the silence so that these two people can talk with, to each other? Huh? Then how did Krishna spoke? And how did Arjuna receive it? It was Lord Krishna who made a nice miracle. He was the Grishikesa. His name is Grishikesa. Eva Mukto Grishikesa Guda Kesa in Abhavata. In first and second chapters, you see the name of the Lord as a Grishikesa. What does it mean? Of whom? For all creatures. Because he is the controller of all the senses of all the being. He kept the senses of all the creatures in a still mood. Everything was still. No human being. No animals, no elephants, no other creatures, no even birds in the sky should make any noise. Anything that enters the range goes to still mood. That's it. That, that to say that his name is used as a Rishi Kesa in first and second chapters of our Gita. So he kept everything still. But he only controlled the senses of Arjuna with his remote <laughs> so that he can listen and he can ask. So Arjuna was hearing and Arjuna was asking, Krishna was answering. So both were able to consult with each other, talk to each other. The transmission was very clear. <laughs> I, I'm not joking. This is what exactly happened. Krishna spoke everything. Arjuna listened to that in total. No one else was there. No one else was listening. No animal, no bad warriors, nothing else was there. Everything was in still mode. After the entire thing was over, and Krishna again, started, restarted the whole process. Then they started knowing, they started yelling to each other, they started, you no, know, just playing all of the instruments and stuff. Of course, war started. Eleven days passed. On the eleventh day, Majarya fell on the bed of arrows. Till then, no communication at all to the kingdom from the war field. Before war started, Veda Vyasa, the great sage, came to Dhritarashtra and said, Hey, my dear brother, was his brother, should I give you Divya Chakshu, divine vision, what for? so that you can see what is happening in the war field. But Dhritarashtra was good. He said, no, I don't want it now. As long as both were good, I never saw them. These people are ruling, those people are moving. I didn't see them at all. Now they came together to fight with each other, to kill each other. Taking new eyes, why should I see while they were killing each other? I want to see them. But, my dear brother, if you are kind enough, give that vision to my chariot here, my minister, Sanjaya, my advisor, Sanjaya. If anything I want, I ask him. Well, the Vyasa said, that's fine. He gave Divya Jakshu <coughs> to Sanjay. But surprisingly, Dhritarashtra never wanted to ask any news from Warfield. 
never wanted because he was so confident Vishwacharya is there. Who took an know that I fight like anything and their own Guru Dronacharya was here, Aswatthama is here, Karna is here. Many people are there right in their feet. Why should I suspect at all? He never got any suspicion. Hence, he never suspected. But unfortunately, on the eleventh day, a message came to the Dhrashtra that grandsire Bhishmacharya fell down. It was a big shock to Dhritarashtra, the father of Kauravas. He never expected so. Then he called Sanjay immediately. Hey Sanjay, what happened? Kimakurvata. That's that's the question. When did he ask? On the eleventh day. He asked Kimakurvata Sanjaya. What did they do? Otherwise, is it the way to ask a question? Huh? Dharma Kshetre, Guru Kshetre. That's the war field. And of course, it's a place for righteousness as well. And the name of the place is Guru Kshetra. Samaveta Yutsavaha. All they have assembled. Just like you guys assembled here. But you did not assemble to fight with each other. <laughs> but you assembled here to fight with vices. But they assembled to fight with each other. Samaveta Yutsavaha. And he said, Mamaka Pandava, remember these two words, very important keywords for us today. Keywords. What are they? Mamaka Pandava Steva. These are the two keywords. Kimakurvata, what did they do? Is it right question to ask? Hmm? There are two teams assembled in the playground to play a ball. What did they do? <laughs> what, is this? what did they do? How the question should be? How did they do? That should be the question. What did they do? They went to the playground to play the ball. What do, what do they do? They play. <laughs> huh? You went to the dining hall and you sat down there on the table. Oh, what do you do there? <laughs> what is this? You went to the dining hall and you play there. <laughs> you went to the dining hall to eat. So, you should not ask what did they do? You would have rather asked, how did you eat? Huh? What did you eat? Would have been the question. So both assembled in the war field and there was a righteous place and they assembled to fight with each other. What did they do? Kim Akurvata is absolutely a wrong question. That's how the Bhagavad Gita started. You know what you would ask? Kadha Makuruta. He would ask, how did they fight with each other? I think which is the question, right? But the Rashtra didn't ask like that. Kimakurvata, what did you do? You know why he asked like that? There's a reason behind. Not one reason. Many reasons are there behind. The first reason is in the same sloka. It is Dharma Kshetra. It's a place of righteousness. You know what it does? Any person reaches that place and handles his own quality. Kauravas are pretty much rajasic and tamasic. So there, the moment they reach, their tamasic qualities will be increased. What about Pandavas? <coughs> Pandavas are so sattvic. So the moment they reach that place, their sattvic qualities will be enhanced. 
naturally because there is dharma kshetra. So when this is the case, what happens? What would be the next step? For a person who is a rajasic and a tamasic, always wants to grab things from others. It's natural. Always wants to dominate. Always wants to see others cry, saddest. So when rajasic and tamasic qualities of cover words are increased, then what happens? They become more and more selfish, more and more possessive. There's one side. What is on the other side? Pandavas. And because Pandavas are sattvic, and their sattva quality will be increased. And what is the result of sattva? <coughs> Let me take pains for the sake of others. Yeah, that's the sattva. That's the result of sattva. Did you hear the story of Ramanujan? You didn't? Oh. Ramanujan Jari of 11th century, the founder of Bhakti, who first condemned the Mayavada. No one else did that. And anybody came after that, it was Ramanujan's argument taken as support, to condemn the Mayavada. That was Ramanuja Acharya who presented that. He went to a guru to get the meaning of Sarvadharman Paritija Sloka. Because Sarvadharman Paritija Sloka looks very easy. Huh? Give up everything, hold to God. Is it easy? Hmm? He said that give dharma dharma paritya. Everything you have to give up. You have to give up your food, you have to give up your sleep, you have to give up your family, you have to give up your money, job, everything. Is it possible? Is it what Krishna said? But it looks like that. Sarva dharma paritya. Mamekam saram praja. Aham twa sarva pape mokshami. Don't cry. <laughs> No, that is what the sloka says. But superficially, it looks like that. Krishna, who came to establish dharma, never says to give up dharma. Because he came for that purpose. Dharma, samsthapana, dhaya, sambhavami, yuge, yuge. That's what he took a pledge. The one who comes to establish dharma, do you expect that he says that you give up dharma? Is he a crazy guy? No. But when Krishna said so, there must be some hidden meaning behind that. He wanted to know that hidden meaning. There was a great scholar in a place called Goshti Puram, which is in South India. Goshti Puram. The scholar was living in that village. And Ramana Yacharya was in Sri Randam. And he was going there to get the meaning of the sloka, the real meaning of the sloka. But the guru did not disclose it. He said, okay, you need to possess one, two, three, four qualities. And he acquired. And then, okay, I'll wait for three months. Ramana used to go back to his place. In those days there were no trains and buses, no flights. And a sannyasi, a monk, is not supposed to, you know, uh, travel on an animal back. It's prohibited. He's not supposed to carry it by any human beings also. That's also prohibited. So he used to go all the way Walking, walking, walking on foot, almost 120 miles, going and coming. Once he went, twice, thrice. But all the time, wherever he goes, he says, Oh, you have to possess this, you have to acquire this, that. And then, okay, 
Come after six months. Then I'll see. Ramanuja never get disappointed. Because he was a real seeker, he never get disappointed. He came all the way, 18 times he went and came, went back to Sri Lanka and again came 18 times. On 18th time, he took many pledges and ultimately he disclosed the meaning of that mantra. Sarvadharma and Parityaji. And after hearing that, he was so surprised about oh, this great, beautiful meaning is here. What the Narayana Mantra says is this. And then, before he took the mantra meaning, there were so many people on the way who used to ask Ramanuja always, Hey Ramanuja, you are so scholarly and great person. And to know the meaning of this mantra, these many difficulties, who goes to that then? If you also facing these many hardships, for common man, how can we be saved? So Ramanya said, if at all my Guru blesses me, I give it to you. He gave a promise. But later, these people asked, this Acharya uh, took pledges from Ramanya Acharya. Don't disclose this meaning to anybody. But in order of priority, his promise to them is the first one. So second promise is this. And he took the meaning of the Charma Sloka. It's called Charma Sloka. Sarva Dharma Paritya He took the meaning of that. And in addition to that, he also got the meaning of Narayana Mantra. He got both from the Guru. But as a matter of fact, he went for Charma Sloka only. Okay? But after listening to Charma Sloka, when he was still waiting, not just saying, thank you, then Guru asked, why did you sit at? Do you want to know something more? Anything more? If he says yes, then probably he didn't understand what he said first. And if he says no, he's not going to give anything. <laughs> so Ramanya didn't open his mouth. Then the Guru, of course, grasped probably this guy may be interested in something else, and then he gave a star treatment trust meaning as well. After coming out of the room from the Guru's house, then Ramanya, basing on his own previous promise, he went to the temple tower <laughs> there in that village, where all the people who were just waiting for him from all the 18 times when he was going front and forth, they were just, you know, just waiting for his arrival. And then he said, yes, I got it from my Guru. Now come on, I disclose this to you. Then he gave Narayana Mantra's meaning to them. Not the Sarvadharma meaning. He gave the Narayana Mantra's meaning to all the people. And they felt really happy. But there will be always people, you know, who pass on the messages like the tale tellers. <laughs> They ran to the Guruji and said, Hey Guruji, you gave mantra to him, see? And you took so many pledges. Oh, he disclosed the mantra to everybody. <laughs> and the Guru took the form like in Narasimha. And he came to Ramanuj and asked, Hey Ramanuj, you pray to me, you give me promise that you are going to disclose the meaning of this mantra to anybody but you gave it up to everybody. Do you know what would be the result? Raurava, the Narakas. You go to the hell, the worst of the hells. The Pramanya did Namaskara before his Guru and said, My Lord, what happens if one knows the meaning of the Narayana Mantra? Because the soul will be saved. It's okay, sir. If the entire world is saved at the cost of my life, I'm ready to go to the hell. I'm just ready. And 
Maharaja when said so, Guru was moved. You understand? When Ramanuja said, when these people are getting saved, when the entire world is being saved, I only one going to help. But these people are going to the grace of the abode of God. But that's fine. They saw the value of the mantra there. But Ramanuja saw the the, what you call that, compassionate stage of the people, you know. And then he wanted these people to be saved with a mantra. So Ramanuja's heart is so wide in which the entire world can be included. And then Guruji said, Ramanuja, you became great than us. You became so great. We thought we are great. But you are the real greater soul. You are greater than us. But he spoke that word in Tamil. Em Pirum Anar. Em than us. Pirum great. Anar. You became. You became greater than us. Embirumanar. That became his name. That became his title. Whose title? Ramanujajaya's title. It became the title of Ramanujajaya. So most people today, they won't call him as Ramanujaya. Only normal people call him as Ramanujaya. But the traditional people call him as Embirumanar. Embirumanar. So the philosophy, what he has given to the world, also called as Embirumana Darisena. You know, Embiru, the, the concept of Ramanuja is called as Embirumana Darisena. That is, some people will be like that, you know. Some people, not everybody. Ramanuja was there like that. It is from those great souls, you know, they got inspired. That's how they became the world leaders. That's how they became the preceptors of the concepts of Vedas. So, Sanjaya got the vision. He took the vision, but he was knowing everything. But Dhritarashtra didn't ask him, hey, what's happening there in the war field? He didn't ask at all. But he was the king. He was attending that king. Kings are really dangerous fellows, you know. <laughs> if they ask, we have to speak. If they didn't ask, we should not open our mouth. And while opening mouth also, we should be very careful. Whatever the limit that is in, we should only speak those many words. Whatever they ask, answer only that much. Don't give much elaborate your answer. And if you speak something th thinking that, oh, they are giving you liberty, you will be in trouble. Mm -hmm. So Sanjaya knows all his limits. So he didn't say anything. But he knew. He knew what's happening there. Bhishmacharya fell. There are Kauravas and Pandavas. And when Dhritarashtra got the message that Vishwacharya fell down, then he called Sanjay and said, Hey Sanjay, what did they do? What did they do? Why he asked, what did they do? Because he knows Pandavas and also Kauravas love their grandfather very much. Though Kauravas were having the Bhishmacharya as their commander in chief, but still Pandavas love him very much. They never shoot him. Neither Dhridra Duryodhana or his people allow him to be shot. And even Pandavas also never shoot him. When that's the case, how this happened? 
what these guys are doing when Vishwacharya was falling. That was Dhritarashtra's intention. That's why he asked Kima Kurvata. When Vishwacharya was falling, what these people are doing? That's the intention of the question. He knows both assemble to fight with each other. So he asked Kim Akurvata, what did they do? Of course, Sanjaya understood the message. Sanjaya understood his intention. The first thing is, they will be overpowered with Rajasa, and these people will be overpowered with Sattva, and these people never want to fight with those people. Okay, we will go to forest, no problem. Let Kauravas enjoy the kingdom, because we are already used to be in the forest for 30 years. <laughs> Begging is not a new art for us. We are already used to do that. Well, let us be in the forest itself, because Pandavas are with Sattva, that is Dharma Kshetra. When you enter the place, Sattva will be increased. When Sattva increased, you don't want to see people suffering. Even at the cost of your own life, you want they should feel happy. So Pandavas want, Kaurava should be happy. Let us not have any kingdom. Let's not have any wealth. Let's not have any room also to stay. We'll be in the forest. It's okay. Let them enjoy all the wells. That's what exactly happened, right? Arjuna didn't want to raise the war. But there is our Lord, you know, who knows how to turn on and turn off the keys. <laughs> and he made Arjuna to fight, of course. But that's a different story. But what the Dhrashtra expected was exactly happened. He expected Pandavas are not going to fight anyway. And then where is the question of war there? My children got the entire kingdom without any war. Finish. This is what he expected. So he asked, Kim Akurvata, is this what exactly happened that Pandavas were overpowered with Sattva and Kauravas were overpowered with Rajas and Tamas? They wanted kingdom, these people did war, and then my children would have, would have got in the kingdom long ago. Why Vishmacharya then fell down? What happened? Kimakurvata is the question. Understand? <coughs> but of course, I am not going deep into the story part of Bhagavad Gita. My point here is the Bhagavad Gita, when Dhritarashtra asked Kimakurvata, what had to happen? What did they do? Because king asked now, my duty is to answer. Because I am blessed with the Divya Chakshu, divine vision, then he started seeing what exactly had happened. It is already recorded, right? Everything is recorded. Everything was kept preserved. So he just played back the whole video. And he was able to see everything and telecast it to the Dhrashtra. He explained everything. What exactly Arjuna did, what exactly Krishna did, how Krishna preached Bhagavad Gita. When did he explain? On the day. The world came to know that something was preached by Lord, something was heard by Arjuna, and it's a powerful message, only on the 11th day. Till then, no clue, and nobody knows what happened. Because Bhagavad Gita appeared on the 11th day, whenever something appears on a particular day, there is a birthday, right? Huh? Is it right or wrong? To your mother, baby will be in the womb. When the pregnancy is declared, they won't celebrate birthday. <laughs> baby is already there now. So they would have celebrated birthday. 
But have you seen ever somebody performing like that? And now, and of course, baby started growing. Ninth month also is finished. When do they celebrate birthday? When the cord is cut, and when the baby start taking breath on its own, on his own or her own, then that is declared as birthday. That means when the individuality has been proved by the world, that day is called birthday. So also, when Bhagavad Gita is revealed to Arjuna, that day never considered as birthday of Bhagavad Gita. But when the world came to know that there is something, when the world comes to know that there is a baby, then they perform birthday. So Bhagavad Gita birthday is celebrated on 11th day of Revealed. That day it came to the world. That is just for information sake I gave you anyway. But the question was, Mamaka Pandavas Cheva Kimakurvata Sanjaya. That was the question. What did I ask? Mamaka. What does it mean? My people. And then? Pandava. Not interested in seeing even their faces. He just turned his face around. See, after all, Pandavas also his own children like. His brother's children, right? Brother's children become his own children. He would have asked what all my children did. He would have asked that. He didn't feel like asking that. He clearly separated Pandavas from Kauravas, from his children. He kept them away. He threw them away. Do you know the result? Because Pandavas were thrown out, those five were saved. All these hundred finished. No one was saved among the Kauravas. Did you hear the story? Among the hundred Kauravas, no one was saved. Everybody is gone. If Pandavas also would have been here with these guys, they would also go. Fortunate enough, Dhritarashtra threw them away. The message from Bhagavad Gita, the lesson from Bhagavad Gita is that even if a wicked people throw you out, you will be saved. <laughs> Dhritarashtra hugged his children. Mamaka! Mamaka! He hugged all the hundred children. No one who survived. <laughs> you know the story, Mahabharata? After the war is over, even after Duryodhana also was died, Dhritarashtra wanted Bhimsena to hug once. <laughs> Did you hear the story? Yes. Uh, after uh, the war, Bhimsena fought with Duryodhana, who was under the waters, brought him up, and then he fought because he took a pledge, I beat you on your thighs. So then he beat him, and then Duryodhana fell down. And he died, of course. After that, Dhritarashtra came there. And then he started, uh, you know, just shedding tears, <coughs> like a crocodile tears. <laughs> and they said, Oh, my PMC, we gave you many troubles. My children also gave you many troubles. You felt so many hard trips. But of course, Dharma is with you, so you won the war. I lost all my children. Let me hug you, my little guy. <laughs> Bhim 
Shivasena was very, very innocent guy. You <laughs> know, just he was pumped. <laughs> he thought that his, uh, his, uh, his uncle, you know, his father's brother, right? So he thought he was really loving him so much. So he was about to run towards Dhritarashtra. But Krishna said, Stop. Stop there. Why are you so hurry? <laughs> No, my uncle is inviting me to hug. I'm not me hugging you. He said, you fool. Cut up your mouth for a while. And watch what happens. He stopped to himself. He created a steel Arjuna. A steel Bhimsena. Bhimsena in steel. And then he kept near the Rashtra. Surprisingly, Dhritarashtra hugged that thinking it is a real Bhimsena and crushed it. It became pieces. It became pieces. Krishna said, Bhim, <laughs> if you would have gone, this would be your fate. <laughs> Means even after everything was done, Dhritarashtra was not interested in Pandava's well being. In spite of knowing Krishna was on their side, but he was not interested in Pandava's good. Which proves that he is not only blind physically, but also blind mentally. That's why Ramanuja Acharya. In his Gita Bhashya, so beautifully says, Sarvatmana Andha. He is totally blind. Some people may be blind physically, but their mind will be open. They will be able to understand so many good things. We have a school for blind, we have a college for blind also, exclusively for blind children. They are very good. They learn laptop. They give university examinations and board of intermediate examinations also on laptops. But they are very good. When you ask them to chant the name of Lord, they chant with all love and devotion. You know, once we were going to Badrinath. You know Badrinath? Recently something happened there in Kedarnath. Next to that is Badrinath. We were going to, we, every year we go to Badrinath. So, once we were going to Badrinath, and our blind children, some of our blind children also asked, Swamiji, can you take us to, to the Badrinath, please? Somebody asked me, why? We want to have the grace of God. Somebody from the group asked, hey, how can you see anything there? You can't see anyway. It was a hurting thing we felt. But immediately that person, the, the, the children responded and they said, we need not see, but he sees us right. Yeah. Yeah. We were so surprised. We that answer. They have inner vision. You understand? They may not be having the physical eye, but their inner eye is so wide and so clear. But this Dhritarashtra, no physical eye nor inner eye is there with him. Very dangerous to be with such people. Very, very dangerous. Because all the Kauravas were under the shade of such a blind person, no one was remind. Not only one of oh, one Kauravas, but all the eleven Akshavhinis with him, all they have just simply gone. All have gone. Remember, if you are in the company of a bad person, no matter how wealthy, great the person may be, 
but if he is a, a person like the Rashtra, you are lost. No matter how great you are, but you are lost. And then, if you are thrown away by them, still you will be saved. But on the other side, there is something interesting. It is Lord Krishna who owned Pandavas. Who owned Pandavas. He said, Mama Pranahi Pandavaha. Pandavas are my pranas. You know prana? We have five pranas in us. Prana, apana, jnana, udana, samana. You know, the life force moves in five directions, making five activities to run in this body. They are called pancha pranas. <coughs> Krishna declared, Pandavas are my five pranas. Do you know the story? Krishna went for making the deal out of us to, to Hastina. Hastina was the kingdom. So he went to Hastina and Pandavas sent him with powerful messages. When Krishna was coming, they thought we somehow bribe Krishna. Give something and bribe him. Take him for us. That's how they were planning. Or otherwise, let us arrest Krishna and throw him somewhere. Let us do something. This was the plan of Kauravas. And Krishna didn't go to anybody's house. All they were waiting to invite Krishna to their homes. But Krishna didn't go to anybody's house and he went to Vidura's house. And there the story goes like he went to Vidura's house because Vidura never expected that Krishna is going to come to his home. After all, he lives in a small, small poor hut, you know, along with, with the moon and sun. A very poor hut. So Krishna went there and just knocked the door and he was stunned and he started running front and forth. And he invited me into the room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry Krishna, sorry, 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 please come in. And then he, he found a stool and he kept it. And then he stood on that and started testing. <laughs> I don't have any manners. <laughs> I came as a guest. And you kept the seat for me, and you are standing on that. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so sorry, Krishna. I thought there may be some hole beneath this. Because in the assembly there where you are sitting, there may be a big hole. They want to arrest you there. Let that thing not happen here. So for which? I'm testing that somebody might have done something beneath this. So that's what Vidura said. Vidura was a great devotee. So Krishna took his food. What food did he give? Banana. Skin of bananas. Skin of banana. Throwing the banana out. Because he didn't see what he's giving. And Krishna said he's having wider eyes. But even he didn't see what he is eating. <laughs> Vidura didn't see what he is giving. And Krishna didn't see what he is eating. And he gave something and he ate something. And he came. <laughs> saying thank you. <laughs> and Krishna directly came to assembly hall. And then Duryodhana asked him, Hey Krishna, people call you as Punari Gaksha. Did you close your eyes? Did you shrink your eyes? Didn't you see while passing my chariot, I am standing in front of my home holding the pole of the to receive you? <laughs> <laughs> Not only myself, even Vishwa Acharya, Drona Acharya and Aswatthama, everybody was standing holding Kalasas lest you go to somebody's house. <laughs> You didn't see anybody's house. Why did you go to the Sudra's house? We are Kshatriyas. 
you went to Vidura's house. What did you eat there? Why didn't you come to our house? And Krishna would have said, you know, he's my old friend, asking me since long. So anyway, coming to the city, yes, I want to finish all my job, so I went there. So he offered to have some snacks and food, so I ate it and he would have said that. But Krishna didn't say that. You know what Krishna said? Siyodhan, there is no ruchi nor suchi in your food. No taste nor cleanliness in your food. So I didn't come to your food. Siyodhana was upset with that answer. It was just like punching on his face. <laughs> He said, no taste nor any cleanliness in your food. No hygiene. Didn't you come to your kitchen ever? <laughs> Our Prabhuji just now has taken us to the kitchen. <laughs> he showed the kitchen how beautifully prasadams are made for the Lord. So nice, so neat. And he asked, did you ever visit our kitchen? Did you see or how clean we maintain it? <laughs> Impeccable. You didn't come to our kitchen ever, but you said it is no hygiene. You were tasted our food once. Once nobody, once somebody tastes our food, they never go to any place. Always come to our place. <laughs> that taste of people make it. <laughs> come and see once. You can understand. <laughs> Krishna laughed at him. There are two points, my friend, you need to understand. Huh? First thing is, I don't want the taste of salt, sugar, sweet. This taste I don't want. And I'm not observing the hygiene where it is cleaned with the Dettol and stuff like that. I don't want that cleanliness. When there is a dirt in the heart, ego, jealous, selfishness, this is the dirt which I never like. That is totally filled up in your heart. So no hygiene is there. That's why I didn't like your food. And I like taste of love not the taste of sugar, not the taste of salt, not the taste of any other taste. You understand? Mm -hmm. I love the taste of, I want the taste of love, devotion. That's not there with you. So, Vidura Annani Bhubhuje. Krishna ate Vidura's Anna. Suchini Gunavanti Cha. There is suchi and there is ruchi. Suchi is hygiene, ruchi is a taste. Suchi ini gunavanti cha annani bubhuche. With vidura, there is a taste, there is hygiene. Where? In the skin. <laughs> Let it be anything. It is banana or the skin or the seed that is for you, for him. Everything is the same. Everything is the same. This is a point number one. Understand? But there is a very important point too. What is that? There is a common rule. Dvishadannam na bhoktavyam. Dvisham chayva na ho chayet. You should not go to enemy's house and you should not feed the enemy also if he comes to your home. Do you know the rule? As a king, you must be knowing all these things. You know? You should not go to enemy's house. They may give you poison. And you should not allow enemy to come to your home also for food. Because by some fate, if he dies, people say that you poison <laughs> So, 
Dvishan naiva bhoji yet. Don't feed the enemy also ever. Both are really bad. That's why I didn't come to your home, he said. The one who came to make the deal, when he said so, Duryodhana was so upset. Hey, Krishna, what are you talking? Are we enemies to you? You are equally related to us and also to Pandavas. Why did you declare that we are your enemies? Then he said, Pandavan Dvishase Rajan. Aren't you hating Pandavas? Of course, we have wealth and they are my brothers and they want something and we want something and they won't agree and we won't agree. So the fight, then you fight naturally. In India. I don't know how it is in other countries. <laughs> I don't know other cultures. But in India, you know, when there is money and when there are brothers, so when it is divided, when there is no compromise, when there is no agreement, I think the people are tend to fight. I probably countries fight like that, you know, for want of wealth. So we naturally tend to fight with each other. What is wrong in it? Look, my friend Duryodhan, you are hating Pandavas, right? Of course, they are my pranas. Mama pranahi Pandava. Pandavas are my pranas. Hey, my friend, I love you so much, but not your life. <laughs> I remove your life. <laughs> but I love you really. Yes, I love you so much. But I don't like your life. I remove your life. Is there any meaning in that? Huh? Do you think that these two statements go each other? That's how your words are. You say you hate Pandavas. And you say who you love me. Pandavas are my pranas. Mama prana hi Pandava. When you are hating Pandavas, that means you are hating my life, my existence. That's why I said you are my enemy. That's why I didn't come to your home for food. Understand? <laughs> my friends, Mahabharata says, Lord Krishna owned Pandavas as his pranas. So owned by the Lord. All the five were saved. In the good company, they saved. But he said, you are my, my enemies. Though there is 11 acrobanies of power, though there are 101 people headed by great warriors, no one was able to sustain. All they have lost. All they have lost in total. Satsang, good company. Bad company is Duryodhana. I am with the Rashtra. Mamaka. Don't become Mamaka to such people. You know, don't fall in the category of Mamaka for such people ever. And be in the company of Pandavas, you know. Even if you are thrown out by such people, still you will be saved. So the first sloka of Bhagavad Gita gives us a powerful message. Be in good company always. No matter how weak you are, how poor you are, you will be saved. Don't be in the company of bad people. No matter how powerful, wealthy you are, you won't survive. You will lose. How things happen, we don't know, but miraculously they happen. That is a hard proof. The first sloka itself gives us a great lesson from Bhagavad Gita. Not, not necessarily the first sloka, take any sloka, Lord. It's the word of Lord the message of the Lord. Every word gives us a lesson. Every letter gives us a lesson. 
a powerful message. Take it, you enjoy. You enjoy the life. And then he will take care of us. I'm so happy that you are in his shade. You are enjoying the warmth of his grace. And every day you are serving him and just receiving his grace in many forms. I'm so happy and I heard that yes, the Prabhuji informed that this is a new facility. Lord accepted for him. And he just recently arrived here, sanctifying this community and blessing this entire area with his divine presence and grace. And we are sure with his grace, this area will be promoted in all respects. Jai Shri Madhara.